Are you here? Are you here? Because if you are, you're in for a really big surprise. If you're not, <laughs> you're in for an even bigger surprise. Another salty dog with a lot. Oh, what was it? It's nice. It's nice. Nice funeral. I'm sure that's what John would have wanted. Thank you. Nice funeral. I think he'd probably rather be sitting in the front row shooting spitballs at the casket. Maybe you should chillax, Manny. Oh, I'm sitting here drinking my salty dogs and thinking about stuff, and I think, Rex, I think it's time that I stop putting stuff off that I should get done. So I think that you're the man to help me, Rex. Michael? Nina, they're, um, they're all waiting for you. I can't do it. No, don't say that. Don't say that. I'm sorry. No, I'm so sorry. No, no. no, no. That's what he did. He stepped up and he he took charge. And my dad died. John. He uh, he was amazing, you know. He 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 stepped right into my dad's shoes and he became the man of the house. Well, I guess it's my turn. It's my turn to step up and be the man of the house. Honey, you are already filling shoes. Your own. You know what? You are the man of the house. Our house, mine and Tommy's. And we don't need someone who holds it all in. We need you. I need you. I want a husband and a father who is not afraid to let it out on occasion. You know, if you hold all of this in, it's just going to explode. And you know something? Your mom, oh gosh, Michael, she's such a strong woman. I look at her and she can take care of herself. Yeah, okay? yeah. You think? But she needs somebody to lean on. Yeah, and there is no shame in you needing someone to lean on. Honey, you're always there for me. Please, please let me be there for you. Okay? You know I love you. I know you love me. Biggie. What? I really don't think you need to worry. What Natalie needs right now is time. I am worried. I am very, very worried. If you weren't here when Christian died, I thought he had. She became reckless and wild and so self-destructive. Natalie has grown an awful lot since. Yes, because of John. Until John, she wouldn't let anybody near her. He's gone now. What is she going to do? How is she going to cope? John? What are you doing here? Yeah. I'm following.
What is it you want me to do? Find my son. Truman's done a very good job covering his tracks after he delivered the baby and sent him off somewhere. So. If you can't find your son, what makes you think I can? Well, you did such a nice job of picking up all that other crap about Truman. I figured you could again, right? Please find my son, Rex. There's a lot of people I'd rather work for than you. There's no one in this world I'd rather work for than Todd Manning. Hey. Hey. I didn't see you at the funeral. No, you didn't. I don't know. John's a nice guy, but I doubt that he's wringing his hands up in heaven because I wasn't there. Besides, funerals are for the living. They're the only people that care. Hey, Christian. Hey. Christian, I haven't had a chance to say how sorry I was about the Boxing Commission's ruling. What can I say? I'm a fighter. I'm just going to have to fight the Boxing Commission, that's all. We're not going to roll over on this one. Somebody drugged Christian and we're going to find out who. And he's going to be reinstated. And you can't tell me nobody knows what happened. So what's to say here about setting Christian Vega? I was worried about you. You look messed up, and I wasn't sure if you'd be able to make it through the funeral. What were you doing at the funeral? You hated John. I didn't know him well enough to hate him, but I admit I didn't like him. But this isn't about my feelings for John. Like I said, I'm worried about you. We're not close. Why do you care? I know what you're going through. Yeah. You lost the love of your life? We've all been through stuff, Natalie. But this isn't about me. Stop. No, no, Vincent, this is not about you. I don't need you in the bushes checking up on me. Okay, I've got plenty of friends and family, so just leave me alone. Can you talk to your family? Huh? Your friends. Can you really open up with them and tell them what's going on inside of you? Will they really listen? Are you insinuating that I could just open up and pour everything out to you? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Ooh, I like those candles. I got no feelings for you. Well, you were wrong about that, Todd. I know you still love me. You just need a little reminding, that's all. Are you holding up? It must be in denial or something, because I just, I don't believe it. Hmm. I can't believe he's gone. How about you and, and Blair and, and the kids? I told her I wanted you in custody. What'd she say? Uh, she asked me to marry her. <laughs> so I'm... Just laughed in her face. Blair still loves you. And then she's delusional, isn't she? Or maybe you're delusional. Because I think you still care about her. Otherwise, you wouldn't have used me to make her jealous. And for the record, I don't like being used. Have you even considered that maybe I like you? Todd, you're still in love with Blair. And, and maybe you should... Consider what happened to John and not let the important things in life just blow right past you. Why don't you go home? I'm fine. Excuse me, everybody. I just, I just wanted to thank all of you for coming tonight. You've been a really big help to me and my family, and I don't know what we would have done. I don't know how we would have gotten through this if it wasn't for your support. Now, a lot of tears have been shed today, and rightfully so. I think we were all moved by the service. But now, it's time to celebrate my brother's life. John was a... 
He was my brother. He was a son, a friend, a mentor. And now we're going to take this time to celebrate the time that we were all lucky enough to have spent with him. So get ready, people. Because we're going to do this Irish style. Yeah! <laughs> Thank you. Now, John was a fine man. He impacted a lot of lives. And I'd be willing to bet... No. No, I know for a fact <laughs> that there isn't one person in this room who doesn't have a story about how John touched their life. And what we're going to do here today is we're going to tell those stories. We're going to tell all of those stories. So I got a feeling it's going to be a long night. <laughs> I hope that everybody brought their big glasses because it's time to raise them to my big brother, to John. Why are you so concerned about me? Because I can see that you're in pain. I've seen it in Angel Square. I can see it right here. Yeah. You watched me in Angel Square. And then you followed me all the way to Atlantic City, to John's grave. You hid in the bushes to watch me suffer. What makes you think this is any of your business, Vincent? Why do you care? Do you think there's something in it for you? Yeah, I know there is. Son of a bitch! You think you can come and hide in the bushes and then come out and take advantage of me when I'm hurting? It's not what I said. I didn't even say anything like that. That's exactly what you said. Aunt Natalie, I don't want anything from you. You said you don't do anything for nothing. I want to help. You're good, Natalie, and your heart is broken. And I'm not the villain that you think I am. It's true. It's the truth. Look, Vincent, I don't want you following me. I don't want you popping out of bushes to check on me. And when I say that I want to be left alone, that means leave me alone. Right now. I can respect that, but there's going to be a time, I don't know, maybe in a day, maybe in a week, I don't know, maybe in, even in a month, you're going to need somebody to talk to, and believe it or not, I'm a very good listener, and I could be a very good friend. Stay away from him. Did you know he was right about one thing? I should be talking to a friend. I should be crying on my best friend's shoulder. I should be letting my best friend comfort and hold me. But I can't. Because you were my best friend, John. And you left me all alone. <laughs> what I failed to realize was that there was a large gully running right through the middle of the field <laughs> full of cow poop <laughs> that had washed out from the dairy. Um, needless to say, Johnny transformed quickly from Johnny Law to uh, Johnny Search and Rescue. And, uh, he's been my hero ever since. 
<laughs> yeah, and then we had to take Mike out to the backyard and hose him off. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was... It was nasty. <laughs> but, uh, once again, Johnny came through. <laughs> Well, we were um, hanging out on the docks after John had taken me to my very first football game. And I was going off about something in the game not being fair. And um, John said I sure had a lot of opinions for someone who doesn't know anything about football. You opinionated? <laughs> anyway, um, he proceeded to teach me how to throw the ball, you know, where you put your fingers on it to get the right spin on it. And I was like, all right, I got it. You know, back up. You know, let me uh, try my new technique out because I wanted to make it perfect, which John also used to tease me about. Really? <laughs> anyway, I threw the ball and it goes wide, like really wide, <laughs> like sails right beyond his reach and falls into the water off of the dock. John was always there. You know, forget this. I am going to toast the way Lieutenant McBain would have toasted. <laughs> Here's to lying, cheating, <laughs> stealing, and loving. If you're going to lie, you lie to save a friend's life. If you're going to cheat, you cheat death. If you're going to steal, you steal the heart of the one you love. If you're going to love, you love the friends you're with. Here's to Johnny McBain. Yeah! <laughs> Oh, I know this is rough on you. I've seen too many good men die way too young. I know you have. Including your son. This is dredging up a lot of memories. Your eulogy was well done. That was beautiful. Hey, thanks, Clint. Listen, you know, if you want to take your grieving someplace else, everybody in this room would understand. You know what? I think I will. Thanks, big brother. say come in get in here balsam sorry to bother you boss hey. I mean both better what is it Rex oh, you called me Rex you must like me don't get pushy. Never. I'm working on a case. I'm looking for Todd Manning's kid. I was hoping to take a peek at the Spencer Truman file. Mm. Especially John's notes. If anybody could have dug up anything, it would have been McBain. Yeah, and he wouldn't have said anything until he uh, had something concrete. Exactly. You know, I'm not big on Manning, but I think he deserves some answers about his kid. Right. Okay. Must kick extra hard today. After John losing your own kid. Listen, I'm gonna have somebody get that file for you. Okay. Is there something else? Thanks. No problem. Well, not for the files. For forgiving me. For giving me a second chance. For letting me back into your life again. It's short. Huh? Life. And I wouldn't 
want any unfinished business. I'll get the files for you. Thanks, Bo. For everything. Get out of here, Balsam. Last time he was debrided this morning. Give me your license. Yes. Great. Thank you. Damn, man. You look like crap. You know what I mean? You're gonna look good, man. You're gonna be up and strutting your stuff in no time. Can, can he hear me? No. He's sedated. Damn. What's it gonna be like, you know? Well, when he gets stronger, they will start the grafting. Are you are you a friend of his? My brothers. Huh. I'm surprised I didn't know about that. I'm his birth mother, Paige Miller. Wow. You know, I'm really sorry about this. It's nice to meet you. I'm, I'm Vincent Jones, and you and I, we played college football together. We were roommates, and we were fraternity brothers, right? I didn't even know he played football. Oh, yeah, man. This guy right here, I tell you, he's one tough customer. And if anybody could make it out of this, it's you. You mind if I talk to him for a minute? Tell him to get up and get out of this place, huh? I'm, uh, I'm just going to get some coffee. Can I get you anything? No, I just want to talk to my friend. That's it. Thank you. Okay. What's up, bro? What? What happened to the lunch you was going to buy me? You think I'm going to let you get out of that? What? You, you, speechless? That's something different now. You know, I need somebody to talk to, man. And since I get so damn claustrophobic and confessionals, I guess I'll do all my talking today. Remember how I told you I was gonna make a whole lot of money someday? Well, I did. And all I had to do was ruin a guy's career, snatch his dignity, and risk his damn life. <laughs> and I'm telling you this why. Because you can't hear me. Because if you could, you'd probably have me arrested for what I did to Kristen Vega. Hey, Jessica. Hi. I don't know if this is a good time. No, actually, it is a good time. I, I'm, I just wanted to tell you that I'm, I'm really happy that things worked out for you and Antonio. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and, um... I mean, who knows? After we get married, maybe in the future you and I will be in laws. Jessica. Oh, well, Christian and I, we're, we're nowhere near getting married, but who knows what the future might bring? Well, um, whether or not we're in laws or not, I, I think we might end up having a close relationship anyway. Attorney client. What happened? I punched Claudia Reston. 
You may have had enough to drink to be seen double, but you're only seeing one woman. And it's not Tess. It's Jessica. All right, okay, I have one. I'll have it. Okay, so we all know that John absolutely hates to celebrate his birthday, right? No. <laughs> so to completely just bust his chops, we decided at the police station that day that we were all going to hide in his office. So we all go into his office, and the minute he walks in, we all yell, surprise! <laughs> he was, his mouth just dropped. He was so shocked. He was, and I just took the picture right away because you'll never get him to stop for a photo. And he was so furious. But um, I remember the next day when I went to see him, he had taken the photo and put it on his door. And beneath it, it said, do you really want to interrupt this guy? <laughs> <laughs> the great thing about John was, you know, he acted so tough. But on the inside, oh, God, he was, he was just a softie, wasn't he? I miss him already. Oh, I'm so glad. How'd you get in? Star had a brand new key, and I made a copy. Yeah, you can go to jail for that. Mm -hmm. That's all this then. Just a reminder of how things used to be. Hmm. We don't need a reminder of how things are, though, do we? Doesn't have to be that way, Todd. You believe that? So do I. You really don't know what I believe. If you really believed that we were over, you wouldn't have a bunch of pictures of me over there in that drawer. Did you notice they were all broken? The glass was broken, not the pictures. The glass can be fixed, just like us. It doesn't even really matter if the boxing commission took Christian's license away from him or not. The man would have never fought again anyway. His hand's in pretty bad shape. Is this something bad? Looks like he's becoming more aware of his surroundings. Does that mean he can hear what I'm saying to him? He's still unconscious, but I'm sure he knows you're here. Hey, you. You know, I was just testing you to see if you were listening. I was just kidding, man, really. You can't use that against me. Thank you for coming, Vincent. Oh, that's what friends are for. Hey, I'm coming back. I'll see you again, man. All right, bro. It's an Irish repast. They're remembering the good times of John and telling stories. Sweetheart, from what I know of John, this is what he would have wanted. Don't you think you've had enough? <laughs> nope. But I haven't enough people. Nash! Hey, excuse me. Yeah, Claudia. Hi, rumor has it that you are planning to file charges against Jessica Buchanan. And you are... Evangeline Williamson, I'm, I'm her attorney. Oh, um, well, even though she deserves it, um, I'm not going to file charges. Not yet. Hmm. Uh, what exactly do you mean by not yet? Ash, are you okay? Who, me? 
Come on, let's, let's get you into the car. Oh, Captain Dick. Nash, we have to get you home, and I have to get back inside to Natalie and Antonio. I feel bad for Natalie. I don't know just how she feels. Because the love of my life died too. But hey, I'm lucky I get to see you and see her ghost. Gosh, Tess didn't die, but she wasn't really alive either. She was just hard as me. You gotta pull it together. If not for you, then for your daughter. My daughter. Our daughter. Because Tess is a part of Jessica, right? But I don't know where Jessica was. Where was Jessica, huh? Is she making love to me? You have to move on. No, oh, right. But not with Claudia. Not with Tess. Okay. I am not Tess. No, oh, you're Jessica. I'm just I'm just gonna have to assume that you did that because you're drunk. Do whatever you want. Come on, let's just get you in a cab and get you out of here. <clears throat> Can I have a ginger ale? No. Scotch single malt meat. Actually, um, make it a double. Hey. Hi. How are you? Um, just needed some air. Um... Excuse me, everybody. I, I, uh, I, I just want to say one more time, th thank you all for coming and, and sharing your stories. Yeah, I, I, I think that we heard something from everybody. No. No, you haven't heard from me. Anything? Looks like John was already doing the groundwork to find Todd's kid. See, that's McBain. Still solving cases, even from the grave. Want to give me a hand with something? Yep. see that all of you are having such a good time and you know telling your stories drinking beers toasting and for most of you you'll probably be able to go on with your lives and that's great you know i'm sorry but i can't i can't join in on your funny stories and i can't act like nothing's changed because everything has changed i can't You know what? You were right. They don't understand. What? Let her go. Now, when Duke died, Kevin had to find his own way. Now, Natalie does too. What if she mean you're right? Oh, it was nothing. I just bumped into her earlier. Yeah. Excellent. Where can I meet you? What is it? The guy knows who set me up. 
Claire, we've been over this and over yes. this a million times. We have not. And I've told you that I loved you. And that I want to live here with you. And that I want to marry you. So yeah, we've talked about how I feel. Now it's time I showed you. He was looking for Todd Manning's kid. I'm picking up where he left off. Why don't you stop being a coward and tell me that you love me? 